So to get rich, you need to have sex. Right. With your spouse. A lot. (laughs) And every guy out there is going, woohoo. Society's family unit is in crisis as less and less people are making the commitment of a lifelong partnership together. It has been normalized, encouraged, and easier than ever to just throw in the towel when the going gets tough. With time at a premium, start by spending 20 minutes per week gaining thought-provoking inspiration towards a journey of self-improvement, ultimately improving your marriage, your family, your health, and your home. What can you do to better protect your relationship from ending? Today, we want to focus on why sex in a relationship or marriage is so important. The sports adage of the best defense is a good offense applies here. This discussion will provide three tips to how physical intimacy and sex can improve your relationship from a female and a male's perspective. Don't worry, this will be PG. Full disclosure, we aren't going to go into the spicy details of our sex life. We will be providing some insight into some of our personal experiences, but it's still okay for our parents to listen to this. (laughs) This (laughs) This can be a touchy subject for many people, whether you've only been with your partner for a short time or many years. We still struggle after 16 years together to meet each other's needs, and to have productive discussions about sex. Some of these reasons could be a big part is my seasons of depression that I go through. We never know when they're going to hit or how long they're going to be or what it's going to do to me physically. My seasons tend to be uh, winter is terrible for my depression. And then also during the summer, I do um, have a little season of depression as well. Obviously, I've gone through pregnancy twice, and that's nine months that I just, I have not been one of those pregnant ladies that craves (laughs) sex during pregnancy. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know. Maybe the third one (laughs) will be the one. Uh, But obviously, we've got busy schedules as well, even though we literally don't go anywhere um, or have sports to attend or, or <laughs> classes or things like that, we still fill up our day from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Our day is go, 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 full, full, full. I think that we also have an issue with the mental side of making it more of a priority. I think we were so- somewhat programmed early in life that it wasn't a important thing and when you're first you first get together you don't have to try at it you don't have to think about it you don't have to talk about it that much it just sort of comes naturally with all the hormones that are going on and the in love feeling that you have to start I was a horm- relationship hormone raging teenager when we met <laughs> and you i mean and you were in your whatever prime <clears throat> sex prime when mm-hmm. we met is that what it is i think that's what they say <laughs> i haven't seen a big decline so <laughs> Studies have shown that we are in a sexual decline in the current day versus what previous generations did. Michelle Wiener Davis has some really good talks on YouTube about the sex-starved marriage. One in three marriages struggle with a desire gap. There are marriages that go months or even years without sex. Yeah, I think they call it a dead bedroom. And it can go on the male or the female side. But we have definitely seen a rise on the male side of ED and just lack of desire, energy. So what is the average? If you're asking what the average is, you're probably not having enough sex. (laughs) (laughs) Or there's an imbalance of desire in your relationship. So one and a half times per week is average nationally in general. This doesn't mean that there's a minimum that you should meet. Every relationship is different. The aim would be to meet both of your needs in the relationship. Sex and intimacy are what separates your spouse from your friends, your roommates, or your family. This is the one thing that you can provide for each other that no one else can. 
is strongly attached to our emotional connection to one another as well. This isn't something that people talk about much. It's actually dismissed a bit. We hear a lot about communication and relationships and improving that. Going on dates, laughing a lot, having fun, going on trips. Why does sex not come up? Having a sex life is important because it strengthens your bond to one another. It shows trust, passion, desire, connection, and so on. There definitely appears to be a connection between sex and happiness. I think I've read studies that have said that people that have sex more often tend to earn more money Ooh. on an annual basis. So there is an incentive. Being intimate with one another certainly helps your relationship. And we've noticed this too. We don't fight as much. We're more productive. We're more motivated. We joke. We laugh more together. Even more than we do recording these podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And, and to have a good sex life over time, certain things need to be there. You need to have familiarity, honesty, openness, have fun, all those types of things. There also needs to be some fire or some passion with each other. That attractiveness can wane over time once we start to get complacent or get too familiar. This is why it's important to go on trips and why it's important to have adventures together with new experiences. It can really light that fire. We've learned a lot about ourselves over time in the bedroom department. We still have a lot to learn as our life evolves. So, for example, how do we keep the attraction going when we're home all day? <laughs> mm -hmm. And every yeah. day. With the kids. With our kids. Homeschooling. Working, homeschooling. Literally 24-7. And especially right now, I think two-thirds of the country is in a polar vortex. So we didn't see the sun for a week. And we don't even want to step outside. It's below zero here. So we are literally in our house with each other all day long. And we're coming up on a year of that. We decided recently that we were going to enter into a 30-day sex challenge. What that means <laughs> is that we committed to having sex every day for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And so here are some of our views on that challenge and sex in our relationship in general. If you need more details on the challenge, you can... YouTube it. Google it. YouTube it. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to get into all that here. Um, and you can make some of your own rules, uh, which is kind of the beauty of it. You can make it your own. We're going to get into that and also the husband and wife perspectives on sex in a relationship. My view on sex, and I don't want to generalize this to every husband out there, every, every guy, sex and intimacy isn't just about the physical part. Yes, it's a little bit bigger part for me than it is Allie, but it's not the only thing. It's another way to connect. I, that's the way I connect and express love to her, show appreciation, and there are other ways. This isn't the only way, but it's one of the major ways for me. This is how I feel close to her. This makes me feel strong and capable, attractive, and downright makes me feel like a man. I'm her man. I'm her guy, right? And that makes me feel like I'm good enough. I've got what it takes. And my love language is physical touch. We've mentioned this before. But I don't turn on like a light switch either. Really? And <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and it's more than just about a physical release. Sure, that's great. You get those good hormones going, those endorphins, and all of that stuff. But this is also the glue that really holds our relationship together. And I'm sorry that some people don't agree with this because I know communication is important and I know laughing and joking is important and having personality and being able to connect and, and all these other but ways is important. that's also important with your boss. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's important with your friends, you know, to be able to connect on certain things and have an intellectual conversation, right? So what's the difference? I mean, once you're, once you're married, believe it or not, there is a bit of an expectation, an unwritten rule uh, on physical intimacy. Guys think that way. That's one of the reasons they're willing to get married. They think that there is now a bit of a, not really a guarantee, but at least an expectation that... It's in really tiny print on the marriage <clears throat> it's license. Really, it's like the Apple agreement that 
<laughs> no one reads it. Third page that nobody reads. <laughs> we can't just wait till the conditions are right. This isn't a NASA launch, okay? <laughs> we can't just wait till we feel like it either, because I can't just withhold talking and communication. I can't say, no, I'm not going to have dinner with your family because I don't feel like it. Or I can't say, no, I'm not going to hold you when you need support. I can't just opt out of those things and say, nope, sorry, don't feel like it tonight. So that has to go the other way too. On the physical touch aspect of the love languages, the rejection of that to me hurts a little bit more because it makes me feel inadequate. It makes me feel like I'm not a priority. And I certainly don't want to be a box that you're checking. I don't want to be an itch that you have to scratch. I don't want to be placated just so I'll shut up and I can be appeased. Just want to be real direct and honest about that. So guys are certainly more visual. Um, and I think in many ways direct and you know specific about certain things regarding sex. But with this challenge, I... I think it sped up our sex life over the course of a year down to like a month. And it revealed that it it's not always about just get right to it. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> uh, I, I need some, some foreplay, some build up too, and some, some play, some back and forth, you know, and I need to build that excitement as well. Again, I don't just turn on like a light switch and, you could say some of this has to do with age, but let's, I, I'm not that old yet. Okay. So before you, <laughs> I roll over here. Um, He's not. I'm not always ready at the drop of a hat. Like, I'm sorry, you're going to have to also put in a little bit of effort, ladies. Sometimes guys need a little, a little bit of effort too, to get us ready. We also can't wait till 1030 at night when we're tired and mm -hmm. the chaos of the day has us all beaten down. And now all we can think about is passing out mm -hmm. and what we're going to do in the morning and start our day over. So physically, it's probably better to start in the morning or do something midday. But it definitely revealed a few things about that part of our life. Now for the woman or wife's perspective on sex and even more specifically this sex challenge. Again, I know that I'm probably an anomaly when it comes to sex in a relationship Sex and intimacy isn't as much about the physical part for me. And I think that that's just because of the, the way that I grew up, that uh, sex was explained as a means of procreation. Part of it is physical and great physically. <laughs> okay. But it's more of a emotional and mental connection for me. And that connection that we have when we are intimate with each other <laughs> flows over into other parts of our everyday life. When we have that connection, we are more agreeable with each other every mm -hmm. day. And we even have more physical touch throughout the day. We kiss each other a lot more, even <laughs> though we're right beside each other 24-7, <laughs> basically. Well, and, and I noticed there wasn't that level of suspicion like if one of us would make a joke the other didn't take it seriously like what do you mean by that it was more of oh geez joking around you know like <laughs> we didn't take jabs and make little comments and we didn't take things serious and make a big deal out of them so my love language is words of affirmation and acts of service so physical touch is still important but i don't put as much importance on sex I've had to learn and develop over the last 16 years that we've been together that sex can hold more value than just procreation. In general, I do feel like this challenge made us more agreeable, like I said. It didn't necessarily reduce stress or irritation <laughs> with our schedules and responsibilities, and that's something that we need to continue to work on because I am very task-oriented and check the boxes off every day, which you heard Ben does not appreciate. <laughs> and so having one more thing to do during the day stresses me out. Additionally, like I said, we're go, go, go. And so waiting until 1030 at night after we get done working was not ideal for us. Additionally, like we've said, we are together 24-7 with our kids. 
our daughter is almost nine and getting to the age where mom and dad can't really be alone (laughs) for more than 10 minutes without her asking 50 questions. So we did have to wait until the kids were in bed at night and stuff like that. I mean, case in point, even us recording this episode, she knocked on the door. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah. it's a little bit harder for us to find a load time. And I think for sure when we do this again that we're going to schedule some date nights so that <clears throat> no shocker here, you know, I'm a crock pot and take four to six hours to warm up. <laughs> And so it'd be really nice for us. And the power us. goes out frequently, and it can <laughs> shut that heating process down real quick. It can be anything, by yes, the way. Yes, it can. The switch can go off real quick with just mm-hmm. just anything. Obviously, having a you know a very mobile, almost one year old, in addition to homeschooling, working from home. But in your defense, I would say when you're ready, you're ready too. I, I think there are times when the mood strikes, like you know what you want, and you're mm-hmm. gonna go get it, right? And treating guys like they're microwaves all the time isn't necessarily fair either. You're sort of boxing people in that, oh, well, you should just be ready all the time. No, I'm, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd be bumping into stuff a lot if that was the case. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> be knocking things off the shelf left and right. So, the idea I think for us is that we definitely have things we've learned and I know it can be uncomfortable. It's not exactly a comfortable topic for us. We're sort of pushing ourselves outside of our comfort zone. But in terms of tips that we would offer for a better sex life and a long-term relationship of whatever kind. So number one, put your phone down. That seems obvious, but my gosh, the, the signal is out there that you're not important, that you're not a priority. These other things are more interesting, right? It drains us of our energy and our focus. And I would rather see people get up and exercise, eat right, get some daylight, go out and have fun. That gets the blood flowing. You're going to feel like doing more of these things with your spouse instead of sitting there like a zombie, watching Netflix and cramming down carbs. (laughs) So number two, and this is for men and women, but I'm, I'm definitely looking at the women here. Focus on sex a little bit more. I know you've got a million other things bouncing around in your head. Try to get a little bit more focused. We we all do this, right? Like we all get distracted by work. We all have all these other priorities with kids. We have hobbies. We have friends. We have family and all these other priorities. But make little gestures throughout the day. Send like a naughty text just for fun or just a little something to say, hey, I'm thinking about you. Still find you attractive. Yes, we're busy, but just get creative. I, we're all busy, but you need to make a little bit of time throughout the day. It's not much. Number three would be to overcome some of your inhibitions. You heard from Allie that the view that she had in her childhood on sex wasn't necessarily a positive one. Some people have had some bad experiences out there, of course, absolutely. And that probably needs to get looked at by a professional or do some research on it. I would say sex can be very taboo for many people out there. It's gross and icky and we don't want to talk about it. It's uncomfortable. And you can just think you're just not a sexual person at all. But you may need to overcome that, especially if the person that you love is a sexual person because it's not just all about you. As we said, this overflows and spreads into other areas of your life. So this isn't just about the bedroom part. We really hope that this discussion helps some of you out there on this topic. We know it can be a bit dismissed and overlooked or a bit uncomfortable, but we have found it to be an integral part of a successful and thriving relationship together. This week's call to order is to challenge yourself. Write down how your current sex life compares to what your ideal sex life would look like. What is holding you and your spouse back? Get creative and talk to your spouse. John Gottman has a great app for your phone, which has what are called card decks, and some of the sections get into ideas that you can experiment with. You could even consider a 30-day sex challenge to see if that would spark some improvement. If you're ready for your marriage and family dynamic to thrive and not just survive, 
All it takes is 20 minutes or less joining us each week. It begins with a journey of self-improvement while you sit in the carpool lane, commute to work, squeeze in a workout, or get halfway through folding that laundry pile. Be sure to check out the blog at thefamilyorder.com and follow us on Facebook at The Family Order. If you're ready to start your journey, be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss new episodes every Monday.